Spawning in the bottom left in the blue for Kites of Gaming. Give it up for Solar. And his opponent on the upper right hand side of the map in the blue, or in the red, excuse me, for Team NV. He is Bunny. Yeah, good enough. Now, this is, of course, the winner's match here. Solar looks dominant over Creator, even if game number one did go a little bit long. And Bunny, well, he smashed Armani as well. Now, to be fair, game number two of that series was very much a Armani tries to go Nidus, Armani has Nidus found, Armani leaves game. However, game number one, Armani just was never able to take the trades that he really wanted to take, and as a result, he just kind of died ever so slowly there on 2000 Atmospheres. So really what, what I'm saying here is both Bunny and Solar have looked really good in their first match, in, uh, in their first matches in this uh, tournament thus far, 2-0, 2-0. So really what we're going to look at here is whether Bunny uh, can show that same level of class against Solar. Yes, he did 2-0 Armani, but effectively that was a 1-0 and kind of a botched all in. So I don't really, I really don't count that on the same level as, as a 2-0. And on top of that... Well, Solar is just that much better <laughs> at TVZ than, uh, or at ZVT than Armani is. Uh, Solar, honestly, one of the best, uh, best Zerg players in the world in this match. If I put him up there with, uh, DRG, Cyril, and Raynor, as I think, like, I don't know. Is that fair? <laughs> right, because, I mean, we have Rogue and Dark, too. I don't know. I feel like, uh, Rogue is good at every matchup, right? Dark, good at every matchup, unless it's, you know, ZBC against Lambo, where he got 2-0 yesterday, which, by the way, was insane. Heavily, highly recommend checking out those VODs, uh, if you do get the chance. Those will be on our YouTube. Uh, especially Game 2, man. The, 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 man. That Game 2 on Romanticide was bonkers. It's an incredible game. Even if it is a ZBZ. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe just me, but I love ZBZ, and that game was... Oh, man, that game was so good. Anyway... The Reaper will find its way on in here, and, uh, well, we'll get a Zergling, but again, that's the math. You go for four Zerglings, you lose one, you go for six, you don't lose any. And, and Solar, you know, he'd rather lose the 25 minerals than spend the extra 50. Here's uh, how that one does work on ours. We have the third base on the way, of course. Solar, interestingly enough, he will take the triangular third, not the linear third, which, you know, that's something we saw Armani do. Armani did take his linear base as his third base. And now that is, of course, pushable. That is a bit of a problem with the rocks there. But if you take it down, it's actually still going to be a problem because of the, of the low ground sieged up position. So Solar, he's not going to, he says to hell with that. I'm not going to deal with that just yet. And actually, I wouldn't even be surprised to see him expand up the left-hand side, at least for his fourth base. Because, again, that's still somewhat away from where the Terran is. And, well, it doesn't have the, the quite as nasty of a sieged up position. So we're going to really, uh, I haven't seen enough ZBTs on this map to really have a solid understanding of the expand pattern, but it does seem like Solar kind of has the right of it in this game. Yes, is it, is it a little bit more vulnerable to high ground, low ground drops from the Terran? Sure. That's a bit of annoying. It, it's a longer, it's a lot longer for you to run from your net, from your main base to your third in this configuration than it is if you go, uh, main base to your third in the linear, uh, configuration Compared to how far the Terran has to go, right? Terran can just kind of pop up, pop down, and you have to go run all the way, all the way around. Granted, we're gonna have to see whether that's even a thing here, as it will be Hellion Banshee, the tech path of choice, and Solar should scout. That, yeah, there we go. So he will see the uh, the tech lab researching. So he's like, okay, it's Cloak, it's Banshees, Lair's on the way. At this point, though, I mean, we it's very rare that we see this Hellion Banshee really get too much done. Yeah, you might see three to five drones get picked off by the Banshees occasionally. But it's not the uh, much more committed build that it was back in the previous expansion. Now, now that we're going to see the Reapers, the Hellions, they're going to try to dive on in. But with the three three queens here. Now. <laughs> and yeah, Solar's going to be just about blase about this as I am. He's going to keep everything alive, keep his creep spread going. And uh, doesn't even really feel the need to build a ton of Zerglings. I mean, he's got like 15. That's 
more than enough, to be totally honest, with the queens here. But, you know, you do have to have the queens in position somewhat to deal with the banshees, so that's kind of what he's got. Actually, I mean, he's really ha handling this aggression this uh, with the reapers and the hellions, pretty much with his queens, right? He doesn't even have the zerglings there on in a... Uh, to try to do things. So, okay, there we go. One Hellion for three workers. Two Hellions for three drones. Uh, sure. Okay. But of course, behind this, we do have Bunny with a third base on the way. He will be able to take that sometime around the six minute mark. And these... The thing is, though, these Banshees have got, like, nothing. Done. Okay, apparently they've got, like, one kill, but... Oh, this is nice! There's no detection here, so we're gonna see all of these Queens go down unless they can get back on into detection range. And if there's enough energy for transfuses. So we will see two Queens die. Oh, but now there's, now there's a Overseer, but... Oh, are they gonna get the third? No, they won't. But still, two Queens is a fantastic bounty there for the Banshees. 300 Minerals, but also less Creep Spread. Also less Injects. Now Solar here, he's only sitting on five queens instead of the seven that he would like, and he's only rebuilding one right now, so kind of would expect to see him get a couple more, but he'd rather spend that money on a plus one on getting his fourth base, and there we go. He will take the left hand, the nine o'clock fourth. And again, I do like this. This is still expanding away from the Terran, and it doesn't. It has it's slightly less pushable. It doesn't have those rocks. It, does, it has a similarly sized choke as the right hand side, but it doesn't have the rocks that make that so uh, so painful indeed. As the Zerglings, they looked first around, but they were unsuccessful. And now we have Banley's on the way. Banley speed on the way, along with 1-1. One, one. So Solar, he's going to be well prepared to deal with any sort of incoming pressure here from Bunny. Now, the one thing that Solar is maybe not the happiest about is he does not have really... He doesn't really have creep past his fourth base yet. He's working on it, and he's going to get there soon. But the push of Bunny is already on the way. So, Solar is really not going to get that developed of a creep spread in comparison to whether if he had, you know, taken the, uh, the 6 o'clock base. Uh, as his third. Of course, Bailing Speed is just about halfway done here, and the Queens here, they're just defending, but the Zerglings, with a massive surround, they will knock down this tank, but that that tank shot will knock down so many of the Bailings, but that should be more than enough here. Solar's gonna be able to clean this up with Flying Colors, and if you remember here, Bunny, he got so much more done with this in the game number one. He was actually able to start doing damage to the hatchery. He was able to keep his tanks there, and Armani was just never able to push him off. Solar, though, he got, he killed off enough of the Hellions early that he had no issues killing off the tank. And then when he got on this round, well, the tank just died. Banley speed is now done. And Solar has his four ba fourth base up. He's at 74 workers, not the 66 that what Armani was at a similar timing. And all of this does mean that Solar is in a much better position in this game than Armani ever was. Now he does, Solar does have his fifth base on the way and he's going to take that other. Uh, he's going to take the linear third here in this game. And that makes a lot of sense because this is where Pony's pushing. He's not pushing into the uh, the bottom side of the map. So that gives Solar time to develop his creep around it to maybe knock down the rocks if he so chooses. And at the very least, he's, he's expanding where his opponent is not pushing, which is nice in and of itself. Now we do have 2-2 two -two on the way here. Do we have an armory? We do, but no 2-2 two -two on the way here just yet for bunnies. Now Bunny is starting to get damage done on top of this hatchery, but Solar, he's, I mean, he, he's gonna be patient, right? He doesn't need desperately to defend this hatch just yet. Now we have the flank coming out in here. Bailing's getting on top of everything. This tank is going to go on down, and the tank count's going to be reset once again. Bailing's on the right-hand side. Bailing's on the left-hand side, and this push once again will be reset. Solar sweeping through, and that gives him time once again to reestablish his creep, as the most important part of this push is the creep, or defending this push, I should say, is the creep. As uh, this Banshee's probably going to go down too, but look at this, we got a flank from both sides coming out in here. Staying on top of the Queens, one will go on down, second one will not. And now, well, once again, this push is going to get cleaned up, and we should see the creep reestablished. Is this Banshee, oh, Banshee's going to take the parting shot, will knock down that Queen. So only two Queens spreading creep right now, but we do have a Lurker Den on the way, we have a Hive on the way. Solar, he's pretty much done touched. Yes, he's been trading. Yes, he's traded worse, because it's Ling Bane versus Bio. But he's at 75 workers. He has his five bases. He has his Lurker Den on the way. 2-2 two -two is on the way. Slightly in advance of the Terran. He is in a wonderfully comfortable position. As he does try to uh, make this game happen. Now, is that a drop on the bottom? So, yes. Okay, so that, no, never mind. That's just this Banshee trying to do what he can. Uh, get a little bit more damage done. At the very least, clean off the Zelnaga Tower. That gives Solar so much vision on the bottom side of the map. So much map control. Because a bunny does have the top Zilnaga, and that makes his pushes that much more powerful, because it's a lot harder for Solar for Solar to really get those engagements that he's looking for. Right? The vision is just such a powerful thing. 
And Solar's just going to give up this base, I think. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to give it up. Tank's in too good of a position. But he's got a big run by here on the other side of the map. Zergling's going to find their way in. We'll force the rally back home. And now Solar, honestly, he's in a position where he can sweep this from the map. But he's just going to give it up anyway. He said, okay, look, I'm expanding to the bottom side now. You've committed so much to this push to make it happen. You've committed so much to this push to the upper right hand side, upper left hand side, excuse me, to make this happen. That, uh, well, what if I just expand away from you? What if I just make it so that all that work you put on in to make that push happen, uh, well, you're going to have to reset. You're going to have to move around. Now, the one downside here for Solar is he does not have his creep on the right hand side as developed as I would like it to be, as much as I thought it would be. All right, I did expect to see creep, at least, at the very least, to the Zelnaga, because again, Bunny was pushing on the left-hand side so powerfully, but also that did mean that most of Solar's attention was on that left-hand side. He didn't really have the APM, the time, to spread the creep as well as he would have liked. So now we do have Bunny. He's going to push on in once again. Solar, well, this is a scary position indeed. This is not the far right. This is onto Solar's, what he took as his third base, which arguably means the base is a little bit less uh, powerful, less impactful, because, well, it's been mining longer. We have Solar's getting ready to try to sweep this army from Bunny from the map once again. Now, we don't have any Lurkers yet. Because, uh, well, Lurker range is just done, but we will wait until Lurker speed for it to be really useful here. Solar, though, was supply blocked for a bit of time anyways, as he did have a couple of his uh, overlords get targeted down. Now, the, now we will have the Vipers going in. One's going to get targeted down. It's only going to be Blinding Cloud on two, but the Banelings are going to come crashing on any here. The Banelings actually splashing on the tanks. They're going to kill a lot of them. All these tanks will go on down. This entire army from Bunny is going to be broken. And yes, now there is the reinforcements, but Solar is going to reset the supply, and that is always going to be good for him, even as he did lose two of his Vipers, which those are not units you ever really want to lose. Uh, they are 300 gas each. They are very expensive, and they are incredibly useful over time. But Solar does have his fifth base retaken, even if he's not mining from it just yet. And uh, we do have, finally have, now have Lurkers on the way, as we do have... Lurker range. Lurker burrow not started yet. A bit of an oversight there from Solar. Whether it's an oversight or a, um, wow, I don't have the money I need to really get everything. Uh, we don't have that yet. So that is going to be a bit of a delay here because, again, once you have Lurker burrow, once you have Lurker burrow speed, that's when you can truly start getting aggressive with your Lurkers. That's when you can start causing problems for the Terran. That's when the tanks sieging up aren't quite as impactful as they otherwise would be. So now Zerglings will find, at the very least, they will get the sensor tower. And they will say, oh, hey, uh, we get two free base cancels, but they're not going to do that. Because they were moved, clicked onto the bottom side, I guess. Anyway, we do have plus one air, now done. Or plus one range, excuse me, now done. A nice abduct there on that tank, so that means that that tank will go down rather soon. Two tanks, well, two tanks means uh, two dead tanks, actually, with all the lurkers here. As the lurkers do bonus damage to armored units, which, believe it or not, tanks are in fact armored units. All right, so Zerglings here will find this army on the right-hand side, and uh, that's going to be a fairly decent engagement. Now, the Lurker is going to run forward, but again, these Lurkers don't have, uh, do not have Burrow speed, so it's rather hard for Solar to really kind of push on in here and get the engagement that he's looking for. Reposition these Lurkers at all, because it takes, what, a solid three-quarters of a second to Burrow instead of a third of a second, and those, actually, those numbers are probably off, but anyway. families are going to come spilling on in here. Lurkers are going to get on top of things, but uh, they're not even going to Burrow because they don't need to. And now Solar is going to try to break this. We have a scan on the left-hand side, but Banelings are there to buffer, which means the bio cannot really stim on in. And once again, Solar, it looks like he's going to get the break. And this time, he's going to break with a supply lead instead of a supply deficit, like we've seen the last couple of times. So we will have Sanks siege up here on the high ground. And with the Liberators, but no, the Zerglings are going to get on top of things anyways. Liberator is not really all that great against uh, a bunch of Zerglings. It's one Liberator shot for Zergling, but there are, you know, 50 more where that came from. And that one tank does survive, surprisingly enough. Solar realizing, eh, I don't really want to be in that meat grinder anymore. But now we have Lurker Burrow. We should see plus two on the attack get started here as well. But again, Lurkers are very expensive from a gas perspective. It's uh, like 250, 275 gas, I think. So getting a, a Lurker range, getting a ranged attack upgrades, it's expensive. So Solar would much rather, of course, put himself on an, in this position where he does have a max of army, where he is uh, able to build more Banley, all of that. And then he would just kind of go sit there and, uh, well, 
get plus two because honestly plus one lurkers are really all you need i mean plus two is powerful and there we go now that he has the max out he will be able to get plus two as the zerglings are going to surround here on top of this fourth base and actually there's not even a repair the banelings are going to come crashing on in now most of these scvs are going to go down this is got yeah this is a not a dead base actually with the bio coming back on in but 15 scvs have died meanwhile it looks like one base did die yeah, one orbital did die. Second one is going to start burning here as Bunny lifts up and he lands and he lifts up. He's going to have to lift up again because that orbital is burning. Now, Zerglings are going to come on and come on in once again. A lot of ghosts here, and ghosts are actually really good against Zerglings. They are not light units. They do bonus damage to light. So they do very well against the Zergling Bane League style. But they will get marooned off. And that's always going to be a problem. It's once again, Solo, he's going to look to crack down on the bases here of a Bunny. Cracklings getting on top of it. On top of this, it's only plus two Cracklings, not plus three. But this is a dead base to be sure. There we go. So, dead base. And we have a bunch of lurkers burrowed on the other side of the map. Are these? Okay, they're just knocking down the rocks. I like that a lot, actually. So now we do have Bunny here. He is on five bases, although realistically... He's mined out of his main. He's mostly mined out of his natural. He only has eight working min or four working mineral patches on his third base. So eight total workers there. So it's not the best situation. Is that we do have a blinding cloud on top of the single tank that was dead anyways. But families are going to come crashing on in. Ghost not with the best snipes. This fourth base is going to go on down. Now Solar really putting the screws here to Bunny. As Bunny, his economy is now in the dumps. Yes, he does have that fifth base. Yes, it is a planetary there. Yes, he has plenty of mules. But it's only one base. We look at relative incomes. It's not all that great. It's minus 15k or 1.5k here for Bunny. And yes, Solar will lose a large portion of his army. A lot of those lurkers will go on down, but we have 3-2 on the way. And that by that, I mean plus two, uh, plus two range, plus three melee. All going to find its way on in. And Solar, he's going to have those upgrades rather soon, which is going to make his army just so much more powerful. Of course, lurkers with how they attack, with how they do damage, right? Uh, doing damage in a line, it's a lot of slash damage. Attack upgrades are so incredibly valuable on them. Now, we do have a Solar with a fantastic, or excuse me, Bunny with a fantastic pre-split on here on the left-hand side as he looks to snipe down that base that, well, Solar took a while ago and then he finally retook. So these Marauders are actually doing a really good job, but Zerglings are going to come spilling on in. That means the defense here of this third base, well, it's not going to be much of a defense anymore. Sure, there's personal cloaking on these ghosts, and that is nice. They will eventually kill off these Zerglings, and Bunny will knock down this base from Solar, but it's a matter of relative damage. Yes. Bunny got a base. Solar just got 26 workers and functionally a base, right? Because there's there's no money there. And he got a bunch of tanks and he got a bunch of reinforcements. So Bunny, yeah, he's getting damage done, but it's just not to the same level. It's not the same quality. So we're going to have to see whether Bunny's going to be able to make this push still happen, right? How many tanks do we have on the map? We have four. Four tanks and two liberators are not enough to really deal with this style. And yes, this is a double factory play. But uh, I've seen a lot of Terrans actually just start going to Triple Factory. Which seems rather powerful indeed. As now the Zerglings will find this base and they're like, wait a minute, there's there's nothing here. Like, is it, is it even worth doing something? Yeah, it is worth killing this base. Because, I mean, less scans, less mules, all those fun things. But Bullet Bunny will be able to defend this, at least for now. A little nice snipes will uh, knock down another worker, but... Again, Solar, as much as his supply does drop and it rebuilds and it drops and rebuilds, the key thing is it rebuilds because Solar, his income is 3k in his favor. Right, that is a nigh insurmountable economic lead. Now, hello, Anki. Thanks for sending me the replay. I do appreciate it. This was the best game of the day, so I'm sad we missed it live, but we're doing it somewhat live anyways. Now, it looks like... Do we have a... Oh, okay, Tank killed off a couple of drones that were rallying long-distance mining there on the left-hand side. But it's still 80 workers. Now, Bunny is now able to mine off of his third base once again, but not for much longer. He is, there's very little money left in that third base. He's mining off of his fourth base as well, but I want to say this is an orbital from the natural. Okay, it is, which means it's a lot less defensible. And now, Solar, he's posturing for that position. He's going to look for the uh, left 12 o'clock base, called the 11 o'clock base, and he will find nothing. He will find that wanting. So now that gives him license to move on in... To the very least, establish some map control. Knock down the Zelnagas. But Bunny, though, he's he's working on an entirely different side of the map. He says, okay, look, if your entire army, if the majority of your army is going to be on the left-hand side, it's time for me to get something done on the right. But there are 
I don't even want to know how many lurkers there on the right hand side that are going to look to do the defense. And now the lurkers are going to burrow on in. The tanks are doing an admirable job to be sure, but they're going to go down immediately. EMP on the Overseers, I guess, but the Viper is still there. Bailey's going to come crashing on in. The base is going to go down, and now Bunny, he has no money left over whatsoever. GG Solar is going to take the game. Here we are, spawning the bottom right in the blue, of course. Representing Kaitsa Gaming, he is Solar. And his opponent in the upper left in the red. Down one game in this series. Trying to strike his way back. Take his take his game to game number three. He is Bunny. And you know what? As much as Bunny did lose game number one, he looked damn good. He got Solar's fourth base. Solar, however, by that point, he already had another fourth base set up. So no big deal there. He was able to keep pushing. He put Solar in some uncomfortable positions. But Solar, every time that happened, he had 30 Zerglings across the map. They forced Bunny back. They meant it, that Bunny was not really able to get the type of damage that he was looking for. He was not really able to compound the damage that he did into a significant advantage. As Solar did ju just did a fantastic job of rotating around the map, of finding these positions that he would not otherwise... That he would, well, not normally want to get. So uh, now Bunny here. He's going to hope to do something maybe a little bit different or maybe just a little bit better than he did in game number one. Because again, minor differences if he doesn't take as much damage from those counterattacks. If he's able to put the screws to Solar maybe just a little bit harder. If he's able to leapfrog his tanks maybe just a little bit faster. All of these things are opportunities there that Bunny didn't do perfectly and Solar was able to punish. Now, if you remember, of course, the biggest of deals was uh, Bunny lost a tank with his, like, first move out. Right? He moved out on the map with, like, 10 Marines. And, um... I think it was, like, it was like 10 Marines and... A one tank, right? And a couple aliens. And Solar was able to find that, and the tank died. Which is a massive deal, right? Every, you want to keep tanks alive as long as possible. Because, well, they take a long to build. They're expensive. But more importantly, I mean, you get two tanks that are probably two and a half times better than one. Three tanks are probably four and a half better, the four and a half times better, and it just it compounds, right? With the amount of splash damage you can put on out, uh, with the ability to kill uh, banelings all that rather quickly, target the banelings down, all that fun stuff. You want to have as many tanks as well, not as many tanks as possible, because then you're playing mech, and mech's not all that great in the meta. But enough, you want to have enough there to really make your position strong. I'm talking like four, five, six tanks. And you keep losing them as Bunny did, well, you don't get to that critical mass quite as quickly. So Bunny, in this game, he will go for a third command center rather quickly, because he's a Korean Terran. No surprise there. That being said, of course, he did not go for that in game number one. But I think this is three of the four games that he's gone for it in this tournament. Uh, I believe I want to say he did it both games against uh, against Armani. Now, of course, we do have Hellions on the way, but it's not going to be Banshees. It's not going to even be a Liberator, at least not at first. It's going to be a Hellions with a, with a Viking, with a Pulse Viking. Just going to go try to clear as much Fission uh, from Solar uh, out uh, away from the map as possible. And it's guaranteed one Overlord. It might get the second. It might even get a third, but I think that one is doubtful indeed. So, at the very least, one Viking for one Overlord, not bad. It does prevent any sort of follow-up scouting. This Hellion will go on down. A little bit of sloppiness there. From Bunny, a little bit of misrally. Oh, he's gonna. Oh no, Solar's gonna get two. Really nice moves there from Solar, but realistically, that was a mistake from Bunny more than anything else. He rallied. He put the rally of his factory on top of his Hellions, and that will rally, of course, through the middle of the map. Uh, because of well, when Bunny got around to the left-hand side, and that just means that uh, now Bunny's on uh, two Hellions. Well, he's on four Hellions now, but not the six that he really wants.
So now we have double Evo on the way here for Solar, as he is playing that Ling Bane style once again. He played in game number one. Uh, this time, though, he will actually have a rather significant upgrade lead, because, well, there are no Ebays on the way. Just now, they're actually never, never mind, there are Ebays on the way, I'm just blind. Uh, so Ebays are going to be about halfway done by the time this plus one starts. So Solar, he's going to have a little bit of an upgrade lead. It's going to be 15 seconds, something like that, which is useful. That does mean that he can make use of those timings if Bunny is really making a strong push and say, okay... Well, I have better upgrades for the next X amount of time here. This is the perfect time for me to go take the fight, sweep you from the map, reset your push, reset your tank count, most importantly, and, well, drone up after that. So the Hellions are going to try to dive on in on the left-hand side, but there are Zerglings there, there are two Queens. They're not going to be all that impactful, although they will get this Creep Tumor. So that is going to be pretty nice for them. For them. As I know, 1-1 is on the way here, of course, for Bunny. It's going to be a little bit slower than the 1-1 of Solar. But, uh, I mean, it's going to be close enough to not really make a difference unless, again, this is a push from Bunny that Solar's going to be able to hit that brief time and try to sweep him from the map. Other than that, though, it most likely will not really do that much in this game. So look at this. Bunny's going for a full wall off in the natural, which shouldn't surprise anyone. But this is Romanticide. And Romanticide has a pretty cool fa feature. Of course, you can mine out that mineral wall. And this is something we see Terrans do more and more. Uh, Innovation, I think, was the first player I saw do this. But you take the Rich Vespian uh, base. You get a planetary there. That, of course, defends your rally. You mine out, like, one mineral patch. And you put a tank right on the other side of it. So you have the full wall that you never have to keep a... Uh, that you never have to let down. And then you just kind of rally through that one mineral patch. And that is almost impossible for Solar to really punish to get on top of your rally. And that's always going to be very nice indeed. So now, of course, we do have the uh, the queens here. Uh, they will force this back, and Solar's creep spread on the right-hand side of the map is very good. It's a lot better around his fourth base than it was in the previous game, so it's going to be much more difficult here for Bunny to really put pressure, put the screws to Solar in this game. Now, he may be successful, but it's going to be difficult for him indeed, as uh, that is a lot of creep to push through before you ever get close to killing off the Zerg bases. Look at this. We have a massive... Uh, Zergling run by is going to come on in, and I talked about how powerful that uh, that rally position is. Well, it looks like Solar is not even going to care about it. So he's going to get through that mineral patch. He's going to get on top of the tanks. He's going to get on top of a lot of this bio. The tank goes down. The bio goes down. Actually, just a lot of the rally going on down here, and uh, tank's going to siege on up. The tank will not get targeted down, but still, this is massive here for Solar, right? He got a tank. Getting tanks is incredibly significant in this matchup. He forced the entire army of Bunny back, and he killed off some of the rally. So nice move there from Solar indeed. This is bought time for his 2-2 to get started. For his Banley speed to complete. For his infestation pit and his hydrogen to get down. For his fifth base to complete. All of these things are the things he wants to really make sure he has before Bunny really starts putting him under pressure. And Bunny will find one Bane that's going to be nice. And he is starting to remove the creep spread just a little bit, but even then, that's not a lot. We will have Zerglings Bane come crashing on in here, into the natural, on into the third base, and this is going to be some tremendous worker damage. It's not the, uh, the well, actually, yeah, the tank's going to get saved. This is not the rally damage that he got previously, but we're going to see 12, 14, 15 workers go on down here, and that is going to put Bunny's economy relatively back on into the Stone Age. No, it's not! 30 works. It's not the end of the world, but it certainly does not feel great whatsoever. As a, Yeah, it's going to be 12 total workers at the end of the day that Bunny is going to lose. 56 workers now to 82, and Solar has 8 more workers on the way. So he's going to go up to like 90-something when his opponent's at barely 60, not even 60. And that, of course, is going to be fantastic there for Solar, so long as he can build a big enough army, because well, Bunny, I mean, if he maxes out, he's going to have a 30, 40 army supply lead over the Zerg player, which is, that's a big one. That is a hard thing for Zergs to fight. Actually, that's how Maru and Bion were winning ZBT or TBZ for just a little bit of time. They would go, and uh, they would let themselves take damage, and they would get on down to like 50 workers, and the Zerg player would still be at, you know, 80-something, and then they would max out, and they say, ha, ah, yeah, I guess my army is just too big, you know, what are you going to do here? But now we do have Solar, he's going to come crashing on in. One tank goes down, second tank goes down, a tank on the high ground is doing God's work, because otherwise, I don't know how Bunny really is, can take that fight. As the bailing drops on the other hand, on the other side of the map, getting seven more workers, so now Bunny now down to 52. Yes, he is building three workers at a time. Um, that should be four. He does have four bases, but... Maybe he just wants to be at 55 workers with mules. 
That being said, though, 2-2 has not even been started here. So Bunny very much all in on his 8 racks. Or, excuse me, 7 racks. Where's, where's the 8? Um, I guess that one was... Yeah, that was the one that was canceled. So very much all in here on the 7 racks, 11 Marines at a time. No 2-2 on the way, and that means that Solar, he's going to take good fights for the majority of this game. Seismic Spines are on the way, of course, as Lurker upgrades are getting started. And, well, eventually we'll be on into 1-3. Solar is going to have such a massive upgrade lead in this game that it is going to be very difficult for Bunny to really, really accomplish what he wants. Now, it looks like despite that, though, Solar will give up this base... Uh, yeah, I get okay, that's what he's doing. He's just waiting for Seismic Spines to complete. He's waiting, waiting to have enough Lurkers to really, really stomp this fight. Now, of course, he will have uh, Zergling drops on into the natural here. As Solar, he's just going to burr up, turtle up. He says, okay, you know what? I'm still on five bases. I don't really care that I lost that one. I mean, it's unfortunate, but I already have the Rich Vespine base up in mining. Rich Vespine base up in mining. I'm going to be fine. So this drop is going to get three workers immediately, and uh, that looks like it's going to be it for now, but no, it looks like it's going to go on into the main base too. And now we have Bunny taking a really interesting position here on the map, where he it really is, he's in the natural and he's outside of the fourth base. And that's a difficult position to deal with once you have tanks kind of sieged up there on the range where they can go and, you know, get something done outside of this uh, natural. It's rather difficult for Solar to push a Bunny back from that. Now, his, his Zergling drop, his eight Zerglings are getting just tremendous damage. And it looks like they're going to get eight workers in total. And uh, that's nice. That is fantastic indeed. Now this tank will uh, get objected on in the high ground. We'll go on down. But we do have the Fairy getting started. And with the Liberator sieging on, uh, up on top of this as well, that's a bit annoying. But no, that will get targeted down. Not really all that useful. And uh, the way this is happening, this is actually pretty cool. So Bunny, he leverages. He leverages that position. Solar moves in, tries to clean him up. Bunny says, okay, I'm picking up, I'm backing off. You're going to eat some tank shots, and I'm going to do it all over again. But now we have tanks up on the high ground that have range to the, or lurkers on the high ground that have range to these tanks. And with the abducts here, the tanks are all going to go on down. And that means, well, the tanks, they're not firing on the, uh, by, on the Ling Bane that is going to come streaming on in. And now, Bunny, he's going to lose a large portion of his army here. The Hydra's following on up. They don't have any attack upgrades, but it doesn't matter. Hydra's do a lot of damage anyways. And now Solar... Up 70 total supply. He has withstood the aggression here from Bunny for the last seven minutes. He now has his five base, his fifth base up. He's going to get his sixth base eventually. He has better upgrades. Bunny only just now getting his plus two attack barely done. It's not done yet. Solar has one three on the way. Solar is going to be like four or five upgrades up. Solar, yeah, Solar's absolutely going to be four upgrades in the positive in this game, and uh, that is really hard for the Pyro to fight. Especially when it's only plus one armor, and you have a bunch of Lurkers that are just going to evaporate things. So now we have Lurkers that are going to go on in here, try to find their way up the choke. And yeah, the Vipers are here. They're going to get one Abduct, two Abducts on top. Actually, the tank doesn't even need an Abduct, as the Hydra's now splitting out on into, into a Concave on top of all of this Pyro, on top of the Planetary. That's not going to work out. And Bunny, he is losing his economy. He's losing his army. And yes, this drop on the left-hand side is doing good work, to be sure. Bunny is going to knock out a base of Solar, but I'm not convinced it's worthwhile. Now Solar does have a... Uh, there, yeah, there we go. GG, Solar! He's going to take Game 2. He's going to be your first qualifier out of Group C here of the iTax Ignition Pro Series number 6.